Before we start off with the review, I would like to say this first. What these guys did in real life, how they prevented this tragedy, and just the entire story behind the situation is incredible. And this review takes nothing away from what they did because these guys are heroes. They deserve to be honored, and they deserve all the recognition in the world. So for that, we thank you. What is up, Flick fans, and welcome back to my channel, the brand new Clint Eastwood directed true story based film called The 1517 to Paris is in theaters, and I just watched it with my friend Mike Jones, who is going and watching movies with me. The guy loves movies, and he's great at talking about them. Shout out to Mike Jones. Right now, I want to talk about this film and uh, the experience that I had with it. If you guys don't know how my reviews work, I like to talk about the good, the bad, and then give you my score. As always, I'm reviewing films and doing trailer reactions on the Stardust app. The link is in the description below. And check out all of my other reviews that I have posted today and last night. I have watched four movies already this weekend, and it's not even Saturday. Okay, so we're talking good. Um... The acting in this movie, I was very worried about it, but you know what? These guys actually have some chops. Now, they weren't helped out by the dialogue, the script, the writing, whatever, but there were times when I was like, they could actually handle their own if they were given what to properly say and they didn't look like they were reading off of a script the entire time. But I think the reason that they were so unnatural was not their faults. They did as good as they could do, and for that, I respect that. They went for it. They truly did, and I believe when they see themselves on screen, it is going to be something that they will never forget. They got to reenact this tragedy. My goodness, how amazing is that? The scenes when our hero was training, when he was at the military base, those scenes were actually very cool. There were events that happened within those scenes that really kind of tied to the end and kind of brought it all together, and I thought that was great. And the scene when there is a shooter on the base, that's all I'm going to say, he really handles himself so well in that part, and you really see the heroism inside of him, and I really appreciate that. And then you had the event at the end, and while it doesn't last as long as I think it needs to, it is very well handled, very well shot, very well directed. The whole event, while there is some lines in there, it's like, oh, that's not very believable. The event itself is handled very well, and I was invested the entire time. And then, of course, the true story stuff at the end with the actual footage, that stuff kind of always resonates with me, and I really enjoy seeing it on screen. But what I just mentioned to you guys um, was only about one-third, probably less than one-third of the movie. Let's talk about the other two-thirds, shall we? <laughs> I know I made it sound good, but uh, this movie is, it's bad. It's bad. I hate to say that. Clint Eastwood is a great director. I don't know what happened here. I did not resonate with any of the events happening before the final event except for one or two. The acting is all absurdly bad, and I'm not just talking about the actual people. I'm talking about Jenna Fisher. I'm talking about the actual actors and actresses in here. The lines that they are saying, it just sounds so unnatural. It comes off so forced, flat, not realistic. This is supposed to be a story that actually happened, and None of it felt real. And I'm sorry, I hate to rag on children, but the child actors in here, they were not good. They needed to be recasted. There's there's one kid. He is from Wonder, a movie that came out last year. He was actually pretty good. He handled himself well. But the other two kids, everything that came out of their mouths was just like a television movie on Lifetime. It's not just the kids, it's everybody. The dialogue in here is atrocious. I'm talking some of the worst I've heard all year. And it's not just the dialogue, it's the stuff that's happening. There are so many 15 to 20 minute scenes of these guys going in and doing things that have no relevance towards the plot whatsoever. We spend 15 minutes in Rome for no reason whatsoever, a build up to absolutely nothing. We meet people there that never come back in the story and I know this is based on a true story and that's great but why are these scenes in the movie why is this part of the script skip this part get us to where we need to be there's a training montage after the cliched oh I'm going to build myself up where he's running and training and that's great and all but then you have the cheesiness of him stepping on the scale and looking in the mirror and going no way he did that in real life. No way! There are terms that guys use when they talk to each other. It's like, what's up, dude? How you doing, man? What's up, bro? And we say that every now and then, but we don't continuously say it every two sentences. It's not like, hey, man, how you doing, man? You know, it's just crazy, you know? Understanding, you know? You know? You know? Like, like, you know? Like, like, man? Like, man? You know? And maybe this was Clint Eastwood talking to these guys like, okay, we actually do talk like this, and we said this in real life. I've never met anybody that says the phrases like, you know, and man as many times as they did in this movie. It's like robots. 
like robots. And just these long, drawn-out scenes of them sitting here and talking about nothing that's relevant to the end story. We don't get to where we want to be until the last 30 minutes and it just takes so long to get there. Listen to me, and I, you know how much I hate the Fifty Shades franchise, but I think I had more fun in Fifty Shades than I did in the first hour and 20 minutes of this movie. Because at least with Fifty Shades, you know it's going to be bad, but it was so bad that it was actually funny, it was entertaining, they were doing some stupid stuff, but this is just so bad that it's boring. You watch them as kids getting detentions, getting in trouble with their principal for 25, 30 minutes, and yeah, it kind of ties back to the end, but we could have used maybe five minutes of that, not 30. And when they get on the train, the movie picks up, but before then, wait for it, it's off the rails. <laughs> Oh man, I can't believe I'm doing this. Look, I am judging the movie. I'm not judging the event. The event is incredible and the last 20 minutes of the movie was actually well handled, but I can't judge that because I have to take into account that the first hour and 20, 25 minutes was just flat horrible. I was really looking forward to this movie. Clint Eastwood as a director and a writer, usually he delivers, but this movie was so disappointing. I'm going to give the 1517 to Paris a 32 my goodness, is this maybe the most disappointing movie I've watched in months? So what did you guys think of the 1517 to Paris? I will say, watching the true events play out at the end there, I think it was worth my time watching the movie because I'm so glad that I now know a true story that I never knew beforehand. These guys, they seem like they're awesome dudes in real life. So thank you so much for watching this video. You guys are the absolute best, and I will catch you very soon.